This is Tampa Tech, and learn something new from PC, TVs, and gaming too. Let's get it started. Use high caution. You can get electrocuted, um, zapped, or electrocuted, or shocked, whatever you want to call it. I'm experienced, and I still get shocked. So just be use high caution. All right, I got a fluke uh, multimeter, fluke 12 multimeter. You want to put it in not DC, direct current, which is that straight line. Right here, this volts. V stands for volts. The squiggle is the AC alternating current. <clears throat> All right, it's plugged into here, right here. So if you wiggle this wire right here, you'll notice that this wire moves as well. Okay, so it goes right here, plugs into the power supply. The power supply converts it to AC, alternating current to DC, direct current that powers on the main board. And this has a built-in DVD player, if you're wondering. And this board turns on. So this is the DVD player. This is the board for the DVD player. And this is the main board, like does the video and the video inputs all right here. And so right here, this power supply supplies the DC volts going to right here. The, the main board, which is uh, 12 volts and 5 volts in ground, it tells you right here. So let's go first test and see if this has, step one is, uh, has voltage going through the. Okay, so now I have it set up where you can see. Let's put the uh, leads in here and in here. And we got 120 volts AC, which is common for United States electrical outlets so that's fine all right let's get a uh, fine ground and any part of the chassis is ground so like, such as this so you, you can uh, use the black negative lead and touch it right here and let's go ahead and touch it right here and we got 67 volts AC over here 67 volts AC 67 volts AC nothing here and nothing here and so let's try to check the DC nothing and then nothing on these plugs right here you know which I checked before so anyhow what you want to do is use your uh, you want to see any physical damage. You also want to smell because, you know, some of these parts, they could be uh, quite stinky if they're burnt or whatnot. All right, so you can actually smell where the um, issue is. So you want to unplug this right here so we don't get electrocuted. Unplug this. You want to unscrew the board. So that's what we're going to do. And you're going to use a micro screwdriver right here. So you use the micro screwdriver and just go unscrew it like that. Now when you uh, after you unscrew the board, you want to get your thumbnail or flathead screwdriver and lift up on here and here. Because you don't want to really pull on the wires, they could rip out. And you want to wiggle this out. Kind of like this. Now that you have the board unplugged and everything, you want to flip it over. And as you can see, there's a burn mark right here. So what that indicates that it's pretty much coming from one of these transistors. So this white line indicates right here, this is the hot area and this is the cold area. This is pretty much the AC and the power comes in right here on this side. So let's go ahead and flip it over. There's burn mark right there. I don't know if you can see there's black right there. So with the transistor, we can read in circuit. Capacitors we can't, but transistors we can. All right. If you want to, if you want to, the um, discharge a big capacitor like that, what you could do is pretty much grab, grab right here a screwdriver that has a rubber end, and stay right there. Sometimes you'll see it. All right. Continuing to fix an LCD TV made by Signia. And this power supply that we discovered is bad. All right, we tested our voltages, and this is the power supply board numbers right here. It's MIP260B as in baseball. 
All right, so you can actually buy this. Just Google that board number, and they sell this board for like under 50 bucks. But right now, we tested it, and this transistor right here, this transistor right here is bad. Right next to that resistor, that, that one's bad. So let's go ahead and take it off. All right, go ahead and flip it over. First, uh, take out the screwdriver. Let's go ahead and take that out. Now we took it off the heat sink. All right, let's go ahead and flip it over. And now it should wiggle off right here. And so solder it. We got a solder gun right here and a solder sucker right here. You know, if you guys can see that, let's move it closer to you. And let's go ahead and unsolder it. Let's wait until the leg liquefies. Once it liquefies, you might have to wiggle it. But once it liquefies, you want to push down on the plunger and hit the button, and it should suck up, suck up the solder. Boom, that was a good one. All right, so let's go ahead and do the same thing right here to the middle leg. Transistor has three legs, by the way. That's another good one. And another good one. So now that those are good, let's wiggle that out. May need a little help. Sometimes you have to wiggle the pins. Make sure you don't burn yourself. So this one, this transistor is obviously bad. You can see a tiny pinhole right here, and it's shorted. So that's how I know this is bad. You can also read it too. So right here on my meter. Put it in diode. I got a Fluke 12 multimeter. Go ahead and put it in uh, diode mode, which is all the way to the right, and then hit that button right there. It's diode mode. OL is open line, by the way. Okay. You read that right there. You got the middle leg. Let's go ahead and put the leads right here. Let's read point three one way. Let's reverse it. And it's reading point three the other way. It shouldn't do that. It, see, there's like diode. It works like a there's like a, a conjunction of diodes in here, and you should just get voltage one way, but not the other. It's like a one way, one way circuit kind of thing. And then let's go ahead, test the other side. Open line, open line. So this transistor is bad. For one, I smell it. It stinks. I can smell that it burnt. For two, there's a tiny pinhole in it. For three, it reads bad on the meter. So there's three things telling me it's bad. All right, on the other transistors right here on the heatsink, usually things I look for is blown capacitors, and uh, which you got to read out of circuit, and uh, transistors that are on heatsinks. And the heatsink uh, takes uh, the heat away from the transistor. The transistor is very hot, so it needs a heatsink to absorb that uh, heat to cool it down a little bit. All right, so right here, I'm gonna read the other transistor legs. And that's open line. And this one is reading point, almost point 0.5. And then reverse it, and it's open line. That's what we're looking for. All right, and I'll do this one. Same thing for goes for this one. Where is it? The other transistor is right here. So let's go try that one, and 0.5 again, and open line, 0.5 the other way. So this, these are good, looks like, yeah, these are good. So I, it's supposed to read like maybe like around like 0 0.4, 0 0.5 one way, and the open line the other way when you move, flip over the switch to the leads. All right, and these are the leads. <laughs> negative and positive lead. So at least we know what's going on now. 
All right, now putting in the transistor. After putting the white grease, you get that at uh, Radio Shack. You put that on the back of the transistor so it's able to uh, transfer the heat over to the heat sink. You push it in like so. You want to go ahead and put the screw back in. All right. You can buy the board. Again, you can buy the board for like 45 bucks to uh, 50 bucks, or you can replace the transistor for like three bucks. Whatever you feel comfortable. Let's go ahead and solder that stuff in. Okay. So you want to make sure you put your solder gun on something metal like that. And let's go ahead and solder the legs back in. Basically, heat up the pin first. When you heat up the pin first, like so, then after you heat it up, then you dab it. Just a little. Hold, heat up the pin, then dab it. Heat up the pin, and then you dab it. Right there. Just like make sure you don't glob it on so it's touching other pins, then you short everything out. Just use enough, just use enough solder. Just a little bit. A little bit goes a long way.